Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 137 of the IROC Knits podcast. My name is Corey Eichelberger, and today I have with me my friend, Hilke. I'm from the Netherlands. Yeah, and Hilke is a part of my knitting group, and she has been knitting in our knitting group for about 11 years. Do you want to tell us who invited you, like, and tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I met Renee through a friend who lived in the same street as I did, and they went to Lakeside Yarn for knitting. And so I went along and then after a couple of times she said, oh, why don't you come on a Tuesday? We have a knitting group. So I did a couple of times, but they had young kids, so I didn't go as often. And then gradually I gave more and more. And yeah. 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 So Renee, who was on before, invited you and now um, we knit on Thursdays. We used to knit yeah. both days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, cause we had some people that couldn't come on Thursdays. And then today yeah. Renee was there too, and she yeah. hasn't been consistently coming because she was working for a while and yeah. then she quit her job. So then, um, she was there today and she said, Oh, Hilka's recording today. <laughs> I said, yeah, she's yeah. coming to show us her five or seven, whatever favorite knits of all time. So thank you for coming and taking the time. Uh, Hilka is a pretty prolific knitter and she really likes to knit with color, which I love. <laughs> and, um, and she, you tend to take on projects that are not just simple. Like you don't just no. knit a hat over and over again or something like that. I you hardly knit nets. Knit, knit, knit hats. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. I started when I was in uh, yeah, elementary school, high school, I don't remember, but I only knitted sweaters. And my dad worked for uh, a, a dye, textile dye company and he had uh, good uh, contacts uh, with a couple of yarn or yarn Oh, I'm yarn glad companies. you said that because I do <laughs> and, know that story. And then he uh, got me yarns. I found a pattern and he gave me yarns and uh, yeah. So, so I, who taught you? My grandmother. Okay. My, my dad's mother. And do they teach knitting in school in the Netherlands? Not, no, no, we have a kind of a, a art thing and but there was an old lady and she... Uh, didn't yeah it no it was not a lot yeah. of fun project let's no. put it that way yeah uh, yeah so we do yeah. have a couple of other ladies um in our knitting group um that were that are from sweden so barbara and and ilva used to come and so they were from sweden and so we we have a little bit of international flair there um oh. but i will say we were talking about it briefly at knitting today you are a huge traveler you and your family travel you've seen more in the u.s is what i said at knitting today than i have right like and you you also have traveled internationally but you've yeah. taken your children to see lots of the lots of parts of the united yeah. states they're now getting they're grown but um when did you move here 12 years ago in the summer of uh 2011 and it was for your husband's yeah, work he worked for cargill and uh, yeah. he still does and we yeah. uh, we like it here so we decided to stay and we have a green card and yeah, yeah we won't go back and you have three kids I have three kids and yeah. so your oldest um is now in architecture school yeah graduate school at and the university of minnesota, minnesota. And, then and then your daughter she's a junior in uc davis in california and then your youngest you started iowa in uh, iowa city uh, this year in so. the fall so the your fall. new Oh, empty nesters. Yes. Yes. So I've traveled a lot this uh, fall. <laughs> She's just <laughs> taken off and taken yeah. off. Sometimes she'll say, I'll see you guys in three weeks. And we're like, where are you going? Let us live vicariously through yeah. where where you're going. Because um, you, you were just in Berlin yep. this fall. And yep. um, where else did you go? Texas. Yep. Uh, and you went out, you took your daughter back to no, school? No, no, that was last year. We, oh, okay. Uh, no, we, okay. we went to Iowa City. Oh, yeah. To, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we took a trip uh, around oh, Lake Superior. That's right. You we did drove the, all around. Uh, the whole it. Lake Superior yeah. tour. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you guys have been all over from north to south to yeah. east Alaska, to west. Hawaii. Yeah, yep. Florida. Yep. Colorado. Colorado. You did the Grand Canyon. Yep, we've um, done that multiple times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've been uh, Maine. Yep. Washington. Washington DC, New York. Uh, yeah. 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 No, they've been to all the places. It's just, yeah. Amazing. Oh, and I think we said too, that Europeans travel like that. Yep. You, yep. everybody takes several. In the summer, two, three, yeah. four weeks some. Yeah. And, and they uh, go everywhere. Yeah. And in the US, we, you know, we take like one week <laughs> and we yeah. go maybe, and, and in a week you can't go as far. You feel like you can't go as far, right? You have a tendency, I think in Minnesota, people have cabins and they go up north you know, for their, that time. And then that's all they take. It's just kind of 
it's just kind of a weird that we don't take more time. Let's start with your first uh, shawl here today. Yep. And uh, this is one by Stephen West, right? Yes. It's called the Canal Rings, and it uh, represents the canals in Amsterdam where he lives. And because I'm from the Netherlands, my sister lives in uh, Amsterdam. We always love it to go there. <laughs> I love this uh, pattern. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I made it my own colors instead of the grays. I had my teal uh, colors, and it's his yarn. I ordered it from uh, the, his shop in Amsterdam. Yeah, so this is um, stockinette and then reverse stockinette, or like a pearl side. And then the colors are in stockinette, and then yeah. the white is in like reverse stockinette. But I want to show you this edge because it is really neat, this edge here. Look at that how he has added, and she, you said that this happened yeah. as you go, yeah. Yeah. right? So you're going across and doing the increases over yeah. here in this twisted ribbing. Yeah, both on the ends of a row, you have an, uh, this is constant. Yeah. And then you increase and then decrease and then go back. That's just brilliant that, you know, it's, it's because it is a half circle, it's flat yeah. on the top, but then it's not really flat on the top, which is, <laughs> you know, really cool that it has these pieces. And then we'll show you the lovely bottom here. And so you did um, increases down here too, right? Yes, yeah. I don't remember exactly how it uh, yeah, was, but, but increases and decreases. Yeah, to make this section. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really big and it's really pretty. Now you you bought it the yarn um in his shop, but it was a kit or you bought you just picked your blue skeins. I picked my uh, blue, blue skeins. skeins. So yeah. I think you have three white and then three colors. Each color has uh, one yeah. skein. Okay. Milka's favorite color is blue. She yeah. loves that turquoise, turquoise steel yep, kind of that, thing. So yep, yeah. bright blue. So um she does a lot of bright those bright teal colors. This is just um, really, I think, uh, interesting. But all of this, well, I know you knit the whole thing at knitting, but this yeah. would be easy public knitting, right? Because it's just back and forth with that edge stitch. And then yeah. when you get down here, it gets a little more complicated maybe, but you said it wasn't too bad. No, but I mark everything. I do rows and uh, so, yeah. You know where you're at. <laughs> yeah. 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 I ha you have done multiple large scale shawls yeah which take much longer to knit but you don't mind that like putting in the time to get the larger piece no. and that the long the rows get really long I mean that's kind of your kind of knitting because you don't do like a lot of little hats and no I think you're not a sock knitter I have a couple of socks but, but I do it at it, home but yeah but it's yeah. not you, you're not a sock knitter like Matt and Barbro no, who like no. constantly have you know, yeah. that, that's one of their things that they always are doing socks. You're much a bigger project. Yeah. Sweaters and shawls. Yeah. I think yeah. it's like reading. I like the, the thicker books <laughs> better. <laughs> I like thicker books too. So that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting because I knit a lot of little stuff. Like I just a kind of a quick mm. knit and get it off the needles and use up some yarn. But um, I do like, I get that, that I like a bigger book. When it's a big oh. book, I'm like, yes, right? Yes. Because I can, it can get into more, the story. Yeah, because yeah. we were talking today at Knitting about that book, Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Oh, um, yeah. And it might have been. I didn't, I didn't hear that. Yeah, it was I right before it. you came. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. and um, Janet is reading it. Oh, and okay. I recommended it on the podcast. I've read it as well. And isn't it good? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, I just really liked it, but it, that's a also that was yeah. a lot of that was. But a I like good. his books, and they are all thick. Yeah, he hardly yeah. has any yeah. uh, thin this books. It was really good, and I haven't read a lot of Stephen King because I, one or two that I read, mm. maybe maybe years ago, I didn't like the scary, gory, oh, you know, I like the real. And um, so I kind of, and then someone recommended this to me, and I said, I don't really love Stephen. And they said, Oh no, this is not one of those kind nope. of more horror. This is just. I mean, there is some my fantasy, not really science fiction, but you know, there is that whole other world, but it's lovely. That in the beginning of the man and the, the boy and the dog, I just love yeah, that part yeah, of, yeah. <laughs> of that. I said, if, if you only read or listen to the first three hours of that book, you could be done. Cause that part of the story where they become friends was just 
you know, nice I love those life. characters, yeah. right? Like yeah. I love the dog and I love the guy, <laughs> the old man who was a grouch. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and then as you find out more and more, so yeah, yeah, I, so I like a big thick book too. So that's kind of interesting <laughs> that you relate it that way. Yep. Okay. Let's talk about the sweater you're wearing. I'll yep. move this over a little bit so you can see. It's the, the sweater. The Comfort Fake Cardi by Andrea Maudry. Yeah. Maudry. Yeah. And I saw that, that, uh, uh, pattern in these colors so I just ordered it and uh, it's one of my yeah favorite uh, sweaters I yeah when made. she came into knitting today Renee mm -hmm. said oh look I just love your sweater <laughs> and it is knit reverse stockinette so the yep. pearl side is worn on the outside of the sweater and I think you can kind of tell on the camera that it's knit that way and there are four colors so she faded from um, kind of a lighter blue to the brighter blue and then a lighter gray to yep. a little bit darker gray yep. But uh, most of them are speckled or, yeah, them, or variegated, right? Speckled. Like they're pretty, yeah. they have movement in them. So yeah. when you fade yeah, it. she had a fade sweater. There was the Cardi and uh, she had this. Yeah, one, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it was yeah. super popular. Yeah. But one of the things I mentioned is the shawl collar. It is mm. big. And I said, after having all these stitches on the needles and having <laughs> this, she increased, you know, as she went down. Yeah that this going up and then around, she had a ton of stitches on the needles, <laughs> but it lays back. It doesn't yeah. look quite as wide on Andrea, but it really yeah. is a nice shawl that completely folds over. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest issue with shawl collars, I think, is that people get tired of knitting them because it's so long and they're going back and forth. And so they kind of say, well, I'm just not gonna do it anymore. And then it never, rolls okay. back or lays as nice if you don't do all of the yeah. kind of the rows yeah, it's just love it it's lovely and so when you're also doing that um you're making buttonholes or no no, it's no button buttons. okay it's okay just, uh, okay yeah loose. just an open open uh, thing yeah, yeah. that's kind of what it looks like there yeah it's really really pretty yeah what i said i saw it and i fell in love with it that color <laughs> yeah for this sure is the okay. tasting okay. menu Mini, uh, mystery knit along from telly bean knits. oh yeah so um stephanie latvin of telly bean knits does a mystery k-a-l so m cal if you're not familiar with that and you don't know what you're gonna knit you get no. the pattern yeah, well, you saw kids. yeah the kit i saw so, the kit and i fell in love with these colors yeah because she had several kits at several which uh, with this you would think oh well uh, why well, you know why did hilka the blue fall in love with these colors well <laughs> <laughs> because look at that <laughs> so she fell in love because here is a kind of a check oh. checkerboard and then they all match right, together not a checkerboard like yeah. a, a chevron goes down in the middle and then the blues go into this pink which then kind of goes into the purple on that end. We started in the middle of our yep. four different four clues every week there was a clue and then uh, so you start here and mm -hmm. you go that way and that way and these are the same and there are yeah. there are some repeats. Okay these yep those two repeat and yep. it comes back in this yep. side and there. I'll hold this up so you guys can see a little closer. So individually, I don't think any of them are probably too hard. No. But all together, they just look, they just make it look really fancy yeah. with all of the different stitches in them, I think. For sure. Yeah, it's really pretty. Do you remember how many skeins you had to purchase or um, were in the kit? Maybe. So um, there are, I think there are three pink, three purples, and three... Blues. Blues and then a cream. A, a big yeah. white one probably. Okay. It's just really yeah. graphic and I love the shape of it because I feel like you could you can wear it over your shoulders and the yeah. fronts can hang down. And then they're completely different in the like blue and purple. Yeah, but the old but three there's, colors match Yeah, three there's no line match, here yeah. where it just goes from one to the yeah. other. Which it yeah. Yes. Right. So I like these colors, but you also had like with yellow neo yellow green orange uh, and they had several yeah. uh, she had several options could, for that and then you could also make your own kit if you had oh, left sure she could so, do whatever, whatever kind of whatever yeah. you wanted yeah but yeah. i uh, what i said that was my first mystery uh, knit along and uh, and then you said you've done a couple more i had two more and also from uh paper daisy daisy creations, creations? and yeah, I don't know which one I had two or which one one, but yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah. Um, that'd be Lisa Ross of Paper yeah. Daisy Creations, and she does MCALs every year. She just is wrapped one up this fall. Yeah, this she one does started in, October. in January. Oh, yeah, January first. I was with friends. We had a 
a big night and then uh, the daughters were asking what are you going to make i said well that's a big surprise for me i don't know <laughs> I don't so know uh, yeah, this is a really graphic one and what is this it's called volt and it is from roland and the yarn is Is isager yeah something like that and it's based on uh, electricity and you see that from the yeah. chevron stripes yeah so and, and so we have uh one two three four five skeins probably yeah. um it's yeah. really lovely. It's a woolly wool, definitely a woolly wool. It feels a little different here. I'll show this one. That's kind of the shape of it. See how it has a high point here and then the two kind of lower points down there. Um, I don't know if it says this. Exactly. Yeah. It says yep. this one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, so they were 50 gram balls. Okay. Yeah. And you needed one skein each of one, two, three, four five six because you have this little and then color the gray, in, yeah, yeah the five colors yeah. and then that little color in yeah. there and did this come out of a book kind of looks like it came yeah out of it was a book but i didn't have it and you couldn't buy it anymore so i got a copy uh, uh from, from the, the pattern from the library maybe no, no. at the uh, lake winds at the time oh okay I, uh, okay i bought the yarn over there okay. and i choose the colors myself to match and i made this for my mother oh yeah and, uh, yeah it's really, um, it really drapes nice. Like I can, I can just really feel the lightness. Um, it wouldn't weigh a thing, but it's going to keep you really warm. Yeah. yeah Cause she, she would wrap it around. Yeah. Cause even your in. mom and dad still live in the, in the Netherlands oh, and yep. you have other, um, siblings. I there? have one sibling and yeah. she, my whole yeah. family, except my mom's older sister. She moved to Thunder Bay like 65 years ago and the rest of my whole family lives in the Netherlands. So, and you guys go back. Once or twice a year. Yeah, well, uh, we, we went back for Christmas normally every year until COVID. And this year will be the first time without COVID that we won't go, go uh, there. Yeah. 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 But otherwise, you... But you I know, was there. But you have also have days. people come here. Oh, yeah. They have been visiting us a lot yeah, of times. Yeah, and yeah. friends and family. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you travel a lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Yep. Um, so this one's worked top down, I assume. Um, let's hold it I don't it know up. which side I, I started, but it's per color. Yeah. Okay. So we have it here. I just kind of want to show people how wide it actually is. Cause it really does have a lot of ups and downs in it. It doesn't really <laughs> yeah. show when it's on the mannequin about how, yeah, it's a but big then one. when I laid it like this, when I picked it up, I was like, Oh, that could just lay on you. Like it could be around your shoulders too, but yeah. it's long enough that you could just <laughs> put it on a you little and, blanket, and yeah. then, yeah, yeah. And then when I held it up, like it, I like it like this. I think that's really, <laughs> really pretty just to lay on the back of your couch, you know, if you had these colors in a room or at the bottom of your bed, across the bottom of your bed, I know it's a shawl, but you said you, you're, these aren't really your colors to wear so no, much. No, but I still use it sometimes yeah. in the evening. Yeah. But, uh, and I, um, <clears throat> I asked you if you got it back after your mom passed. Yeah. Yeah. So and, she was really, pr I made it, uh, she, I think she only used it for half a year and she was really proud to, uh, about this. So she showed it to all her friends and uh, family <laughs> and then, uh, when the cremation, we put it on the coffin yeah. and I offered my sister, but she, uh, it's not her thing. So I took it back. Yeah. No, no. I can, uh, you would want, definitely oh, yeah. want to keep it. it yeah. You know, it's really pretty. Cause yeah, I said that too, that I told my friends and my daughter and kind of jokingly, but I said, if I pass away, somebody better bring all my knitting to the funeral, <laughs> right? And show up <laughs> and we'll <laughs> lay it on the back of, you know, the pews or wherever you're at on the chairs, put a shawl behind each one and, and say everybody take one home or you know whatever <laughs> i even if they don't want them <laughs> they should they should take them because i yeah i have a closet full mm -hmm. uh, who else is gonna who else is gonna use that stuff but i think it's just a nice memory it's a it's a yeah, really nice thing fun. to also for you to wrap yourself in to yeah. kind of say you know it was a nice memory for you yeah so that's why i brought it yeah i bought a, a long time one skein, the summer skein. so this is the four season Wrap and cowls. Yeah, so I've knit this, and so has Renee. She yep. showed it as a favorite. And I, again, it does not show up as beautifully on the screen oh, yeah. as it yeah. does here. If you look yeah. at that, that looks kind of weird. <laughs> it does, stripy yeah. and, and weird. Yeah. And it is, it's, it's so just stunning. stunning. It has yeah. silk yarn in it, and it really does fade more than this. The colors look really chunky there, and it doesn't, it fades much more smoothly. They were all, um, kind of speckled and variegated yarns. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just the four seasons, so uh, Lake Minnetonka. I see in the winter, summer, dark green, spring, light green, and then the red, little red uh -huh. in the fall, yep. of course. So. Yeah, so it yeah. was based on that. And that, yeah. the skeins, they had a small um, pattern at the shop hop that year where you could just buy one skein. Yeah, they had a cowl. And, yep. yeah. and the skeins were like $40, right? But then they also showed this. Yeah. And but you needed four skeins. And yeah. so everyone was like, that's a lot. But then when you knit it, you held the yarn double because it was fingering weight, made it work up faster because yeah. it was thicker, right? Yeah. I mean the gauge, you can tell this is not a fingering weight gauge compared no. to like yeah. other shawl for sure. So let's bring this up closer again. It's super simple. It's basket, you know, kind of yeah. basket weave. You do, if I remember right, ten knits, ten pearls, ten knits, ten pearls. But these colors are just lovely up close. They just glow um, because they have some sheen to them. And it they feels really, good. oh yeah. And you just get this long, beautiful wrap. But if you had four skeins of yarn that kind of coordinated, you could certainly make this. And you honestly, you hardly would need a pattern because it's just cast on, you know, across and you just go all the way down. You just change colors as you as you like. So I did think it was fun to knit because you yeah. were constantly um, moving from one color to the next. Yeah, you were, and, and it was not one pattern. It was not uh, spring, summer, fall, oh, yeah. winter. Right. She, was, uh, you yeah. see it here, you have winter, spring, uh, summer, spring, fall, and then winter, spring, summer, summer fall. fall. And so it changes. She, yes, yeah, she it changed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you didn't do them in the like you know A B C D A B no, C D. It, yeah, you really got to switch it around. Whole, uh, but this is uh, the one you bought first at yeah, the shop pop because that's the this, one with the, the turquoise spring. that you yeah, loved. Yeah, the yeah, summer, the yeah. Summer. I, that would have been the one I was drawn to too. But it's just uh, the four colors together, but also the symbolic. It's Lake Minnetonka and the Four Seasons. We live all around, around Lake, Lake Minnetonka. Minnetonka. And so, the yarn store was right up the street from Lake Minnetonka. Yeah, yeah. And I put a picture in, maybe with Renee's, when Renee um, was on, of what Lake Minnetonka looks like and the shoreline, because it is it is a crazy lake. Like, it goes <laughs> in and out and in yeah, and out and in. And, and it is kind of a a landmark for everybody oh. in Minnesota, right? Like yeah. everybody knows. And I happen to know that back in the day, Lake Minnetonka was way out from the city, Yeah, right? People... Like it was way out. So they had their summer homes on Lake yep. Minnetonka yep. because Minneapolis itself was oh, 20 minutes by by mm -hmm. interstate now, but they mm -hmm. wouldn't have had that then. 45 right? minutes yeah. or so, so it would have felt hour. like, yeah. you know, yeah. along going out of the city yeah. to get was, out of the and city. And there were no, suburbs between it. right yeah so yeah. it would have been country kind of felt like country yeah. roads yeah to get out there. like in the yeah in the theme park in excelsior and hotel uh, it's all gone now we have two sweaters left two small sweaters for kids i think i can just hold that so up this there. i made for my daughter when she was two years old i think <sighs> i'll uh i found this uh yeah pattern somewhere and it then... is darling is this <laughs> intarsia I'm sure it is. Oh, where you, oh, oh, it is. Yes. Where yeah. you go over it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And it is seamed. And a seamed sweater. Yep. A seamed. So you would have gone back and forth and yeah. get that in in Tarsha. I didn't, yeah. And then this is like um, blue clay, kind of a Yeah. So it makes it fuzzy. a fuzzy from the yeah. little fringe on the edge. Oh, it's so cute. And how old is she now? She's 20. <laughs> so yeah. I kept it. I don't... Of Didn't course, yeah. I have. Way. I just showed um, all mm -hmm. of Kylie's baby nets. I have a box in the basement, mm -hmm. and I, I did the whole podcast. So it just kind of brings you down memory lane. Yeah, it's hard to believe that they were that young, like that they were that little, yeah. and that it was that long ago because it kind of goes so quickly. But oh, that's really. Can you guys see how cute Piglet is? <laughs> oh, Piglet. oh, that's really cute. And then it's, and so was it a pattern in a magazine? It's a Fildar. It's a an, um, an brand uh, in Europe. Yeah. And I bought this special Disney pattern. So they have all... And you still have the magazine. Yeah, I kept that. Oh, wow. yeah. No, for sure. So this is also... Look at that. The... Look, they have Eeyore. Eeyore. And then the Piglet one. Oh, my gosh. Are there a bunch? Oh, sure there are. Oh! <laughs> Tigger. 
and poo. Oh, and poo, yeah, mm -hmm. and there's poo. Oh, wow, and here's the book if anybody wants to go out and try to get it on eBay. So what does this say, Frimusas? Yeah, Frimusas, I don't know what it means. Special Disney. Mm -hmm. I feel that was uh, French, yeah. Yeah. Fildar. Fildar. Yeah, so uh, it's a Fildar from France. And then it says Special, because there are two A's. Special Disney. Here's another. <laughs> I mean, that, oh, if I had a little kid, definitely would make one of those. Like, that's really cute. I made this for Robin, my oldest, and he had a little bunny. Oh, um, I found this uh, also, I think, from Fildar. I don't know. I don't have the pattern yep. anymore. I yeah. can't find it. But uh, I kept it uh, oh. as a little zipper and has a little pocket here oh. with the bunny. So oh, he's coming! Oh, what a cute idea! Is that uh, felt? Just a felt bunny cutout? Yeah, yeah. yeah so and then you the, have you knit the little sweater, yeah. and then it has a. One. So did you knit this flat and then stick the zipper in? Probably. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Back and forth. Oh. I didn't notice. No. Yeah. Only. No. <laughs> yeah. But that's really. Really cute, the little bunny on the back. Oh, what great memories, Hilka. <laughs> and would you have made this for Robin? Yep, I made yeah. that for him. So yeah. Tobias had it as well. I don't think I, Amalu had it, but my uh, the two boys had it. So. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, it's really cute. What a nice memory. Well, this was lovely. I really appreciate you digging out all these patterns. And this <laughs> book was really fun to see from, you know, back in the day. I have a few in a file in the basement. I have kind another of, one as kind well. Kind of nice yeah. to look through and see like the older styles and stuff, but those yeah. charts could be used on anything, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, as long as you have a, a chart to kind of yeah. make them from. So this was really fun. It has been lovely to know you in the knitting group because you are so open and friendly with everyone and, um, you you have you always ask really good questions of people like you'll say you know to Matt today you were asking about about his job and his work you mm. you you invest in conversation which I think is really nice I mean you're not an introvert right you don't ha you don't struggle to talk to people no, no you know and yeah. and um but it I I I like sitting next to Hilka <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> at knitting um because she has great stories too about places she's been and things they've done they've all they're always going somewhere neat and her kids I've watched them grow up which is yeah. just so when you moved here they would have been like six, upper elementary six of? eight and ten okay so my youngest he only spoke they only spoke Dutch a little bit of English and we just started lessons and then he was going into first grade and had to learn to read so he learned to read in English and then a year later, we started also Dutch for him. And then at that time, he spoke still Dutch without an accent. Now he speaks Dutch with a big accent. <laughs> but when he started reading Dutch, he always read right away with an uh, accent. So it was really <laughs> funny uh, to see. Yeah. That would have been really challenging for him. Was, was he, you know, when you, um, when you were taking English with the kids, did you know that you were thinking about coming to the U.S.? Like... Was that something that your husband kind of had, so, like, part of his yes. plan? He knew that that might come someday, or? No, we, we the year before we moved here, we uh, we started talking with Cargill because the kids were at an age from, if we don't go or to the yes or somewhere else, then you don't do it anymore. Right. And yes. uh, especially my husband, he, he really wanted that. Yeah. And then uh, in, I think it was April 2011, he the job got he got a job here and then we started lessons for the kids oh, okay <laughs> and they had like three hours in the week and then we moved here and they had a couple of more lessons before we start but they didn't really speak a word my oldest he uh and he went to mini washed elementary school and after the first day he said i didn't understand the word but i had a great day <laughs> and i really liked that they that the, the teachers and the kids could make him feel at home even if he couldn't understand them so oh, can well. you imagine sitting through and did you speak english well yeah i, yeah, I would assume because you have a degree in, in chemical in, engineering yeah engineering yeah but uh we learn speaking uh, english at uh, uh grade uh, let's see seven okay and nowadays i even move it forward 
Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So most kids at some point in school yeah. are learning English. And then songs are in English, uh, TV, movies. <sighs> if if it's for little kids, they synchronize it. But otherwise, it's just subtitled and everything is in English. If you go to France or Germany, that's not the case. They will synchronize synchronize every oh, movie okay. and so. But we we yeah. So everybody's exposed to it. Yeah. Uh, the school had English as second la language uh, program, so they had a special teacher who took them out. She yeah. was a Spanish speaking teacher. She didn't speak Dutch, but yeah. it, it all worked out. Yeah, yeah. They uh, well, obviously, because y you have brilliant children, and they all <laughs> went to big schools yeah, and yeah, with you know yeah. good grades and you yeah. know so obviously it it did work yeah, out fluent uh, in english nobody uh can tell they are from uh from uh, anywhere else yeah instead of me <laughs> <laughs> so yep no nope. yeah well yes you have an accent but it's yeah. it's a lovely accent like yeah. does it bother you no no all I right don't. i think that's all we have today <laughs> i want to thank hilka for her time she was yeah. so willing to just come over she's like sure no problem <laughs> and then i had to change the time today because i had a doctor's appointment that i forgot about and then when we sat down to record <laughs> we pushed record and we got started to talk and then i decided to put our little sign up so we'd remember where to look and i turned it off and we had to start over yeah. so we've done this twice and that's the first time in five years that i have ever had to start <laughs> over because i messed up the recording and i did it when someone was here and took more of her time so that's fine i know that's you're fun. so easy going that would be no problem but thank you this is really fun and i yeah. love seeing all your shawls and these are darling <laughs> i'm taking pictures of these two before you go all right we'll yeah. say goodbye bye everybody bye. <laughs> hi everybody I just wanted to stand up here and show you my new Christmas sweater. <laughs> Look at him. Isn't he cute? <laughs> and he's got this darling little scarf with the little fringe on it. <laughs> and then the piece de resistance. Little llama butt. <laughs> so I thought I got to stand up and show you that. Welcome, welcome. I felt so bad that we had to re-record most of Hilka's uh, podcast part. Um, yeah, and then because we had done a lot of it already, I knew what she was going to say. So then I picked up more of the conversation than she did because I was asking her questions as if I already knew the answers because I did, which was weird. So then I edited it and it got a little choppy, but... It is what it is. You guys always forgive my <laughs> my edits and what's going on. So happy holidays for those of you that just celebrated Hanukkah. Uh, I hope that your holiday was lovely, um, even with all of the terrible things going on in the world. Um, we have been incredibly busy the last few days. So this is going to be um, kind of short and sweet. I have the prizes for the Mama Krista Knit Along and um, this is the Mama Krista shell. Uh, two yarns held together um, in the in the yarn that I had. It was marled with an orange and a yellow and so it is a cotton and uh, knit at a tighter gauge so hopefully you know it won't stretch out much but I do have prizes. There are a number of people still knitting, but I needed to cl close the thread. And so Linda Knit Tea Garden, you are winning the vintage buttons and a gift from Stephen B. So here are the pretty buttons and uh, there's a tape measure and a little uh, thing in there. And then I'm waiting to hear back from Stephen B on how we're going, how we're going to manage getting the gifts from him to you guys. So either I'll go pick them up or they will just um, ship them out to the ha addresses I have. Um, so I will let you know about that, hopefully by the end of this podcast, because I'm recording. Patricia Crossett, you are getting um, the bag of yarn with the um, little kit in it and the yarn that is all in there as well as the five patterns from me. And so you need to go out and pick five patterns of my designs that you would like, as well as the Knitworks ebook, which I've already put in this package. So you won two prizes as well as something from Stephen B. And then the last one goes to um, 
Jesse's mom one, and that is all of the purple yarn. And you will also get a, a gift from Stephen B because he's giving a gift to each one of you. Um, and so you will also get this purple yarn. So if I don't have your address, please send it to me at my email, irockknits at gmail.com, and I will get those out in the mail to you um, this week. But I'm, um, you know, with the Christmas holidays, who knows how soon you will get, I'll get those gifts. Um, I want to thank everyone for participating in the knit. Yeah. We had a number of people decide to knit the shell. It is a very easy and fun shell to knit. Um, great for spring and summer wear, but you can also put something underneath it. Um, and so, yeah, I got another one one out of the deal. I do have a question this week. Uh, it was a great question. This is from Nurse Narrell. Um, how do I calculate for a sweater's quantity of yarn? I always hear people say that was how much they purchased without a particular pattern in mind, but I don't understand how it's done. And so I replied to her in the question thread, but here's my answer. Most people just figure it out over time. Like we just know how, ma how many skeins of worsted weight yarn we need uh, to complete a, a normal average sweater for ourselves. So for me, if I'm knitting a 42 to 44 inch bust, depending on the sweater ease, the amount of ease in the sweater, I need six, six skeins of worsted weight yarn or about 1200 yards. If I think I'm gonna make like if I'm buying a yarn that would work well in cables or something that might have a hood, or a, then I would buy an extra skein. So I have just kind of figured that out over time, but it changes for the kind of yarn you're knitting. So if you are gonna you know, knit DK or sport weight yarn, you're gonna need less, and then fingering weight yarn, you're gonna knit, need even less. So sometimes the worsted weight sweaters can be extraordinarily more, um, expensive because you need more yarn um, than like a fingering weight sweater. Um, here's some other information that I gave her. There are many places to find this information online. You can just Google how much yarn do I need to knit a sweater and there are some charts out there and then there are some blogs and websites who will help you with how much you need. Um, but the best place to find the yardage amount that you need is on the pattern, right? So you can go to a pattern page, look up some worsted weight sweaters, and then look at them, see how much they're requiring in your bust size, and then kind of average out. So one pattern might say you need five skeins and one might say you need six skeins. So you can look at the pattern page, even if it's not a pattern that you plan to knit, um, especially if that pattern uses the same weight of yarn that you're planning on buying. Um, I just happen to know because I've knit a lot of sweaters over time that I need five to six skeins, usually six skeins in worsted weight yarn. Then I would need um, kind of four sport weight skeins or DK weight skeins, depending on the yardage in them, because that can vary. Sport and DK weight yardages can go anywhere from 250 to like 320. And then fingering weight yarn, um, which is usually right around that, you know, 400 yard in a skein mark. I need three skeins because that's 1,200. So everything kind of for me adds up to about 1,200 yards for an average long sleeved short sweater. I'm short, so I don't need as much yarn. If you're tall, you're gonna need an extra skein. And then also I have all my stash on Ravelry. So when I am searching for things to knit, yarn will pop up from my stash and tell me that it is enough for these particular sweaters. So when I go into my stash, I can also sort by yardage amounts, and I figure anything over a thousand yards I could get a sweater out of, right? Because if I'm gonna knit a summer sweater short sleeved, I'm gonna need less. But right in that a thousand to 1200, so I can just like count my sweaters quantities. Maybe I'll never use those yarns for sweaters. Maybe I'll divide them up. Maybe I'll use them for a shawl, but I can kind of look and see anything that I have over a thousand or 1200 yards is gonna give me a sweater quantity. That's what we would call it. Um, then there are there's an estimator that would give you an idea and that's on interweave.com. And I have linked that in the questions thread on Ravelry, but as well as I have printed out some of the chart that they had. So a Mrs. size 32 to 40 bust in fingering 
needs 1,500 yards. In sport weight, 1,400 yards. In worsted weight, 1,100 yards. So if you're gonna do a comfortable ease pullover and you're gonna add 5% for a cardigan, those are the numbers that Interweave came up with. They may or may not work for you, but they're just giving you a rough idea of how much yard you, yardage you might need. I think it's a little over, but then I'm not an average body, right? Like I'm much shorter, my sleeves are shorter, my body is shorter, so I need less yarn. And then if you're in that upper range of sizes that goes from like 40 to 50 something, they recommend 1500 yards for sport weight, 1300 yards for worsted weight, 1000 yards for bulky, 1100 to 1400, 16, if they've got a whole chart there, and so I included that. If you wanna estimate accurately how much you will need for a sweater, then you knit a gauge swatch and you do the calculations. And there are a couple of sites out there that will help you with those calculations. So one is from allfreeknitting.com, and they have knitting tutorials, and which is, one is called How Much Yarn Do I Need Knitting? So I've linked that. And then the second one is sistermountain.com forward slash blog forward slash estimate yardage knitting patterns. And so she has like a, a yardage calculator on her blog page, which will help you to figure out if you want to knit a swatch up with the yarn that you've purchased to see how much yarn you would need for the sweater you want to knit. So kind of two different things, right? Like knowing if you have enough yarn in your stash that could be considered a sweater's quantity, but then also what would you purchase, which is what I think you're asking, is how much do you purchase to call it a sweater's quantity? And that's different for every single person. Um, but if you live in a warmer climate, you're never gonna knit long sleeve, you're never gonna knit worsted, you're gonna have a number in probably fingering and sport weight yarn that's gonna be quite probably right in, you know, the 1200 to 1500 yarn range. Um, and then that's just where I'm at. And I know Matt does the same thing. Matt is uh, about a 42 inch chest, but he's tall. So I know he gets an, a skein more than I would get, even though we're our shoulders and our chest are similar in size. Um, so it, it, for men, it can be a little different because they go by chest circumference and not bust, but it's, this, it's still inches or centimeters, right, that you're figuring out. So I think he buys six um, skeins, maybe sometimes seven, of worsted weight. I hope that helps. It's honestly different for every single person. But if I knew, like, your bus size, I could help you more with that. But there are lots of places to find out that information online. Thanks for the good question. I thought that that was, you know, a really really good question to ask. Okay, I finished a few things. So I made another hat for someone who is coming to my home this evening. So I made her a little monster hat and then I asked her mom what color, what's her favorite color and she liked pink too and her mom thought she would like the monster button. So this is my um, uh, boxed buttons hat beanie and it's written for worsted and uh, bulky chunky weight yarn. And so I got one of those knit for a gift for someone who's coming to my house this evening. And then I finished Stevie's hat. Um, Stevie has a very large head. I think I may have gone too large this year. I've made a few for him, um, but I put a cable up the front of this one and then I put some trim on it that um, rolls up. So I'm gonna wash and block and maybe even dry this a little bit so that it will, um, it will soften up and maybe shrink just a tiny bit because I think it's too big, I'm gonna measure it. But um, this is an idea for a new hat pattern that I'm gonna have coming out in a lighter weight yarn that will have a cable going up the front. Um, and then I cast on this hat for also for this evening because <laughs> we're having a dinner party and I'm going to offer um, the people that are coming um, some, so I'm gonna, knit this this afternoon, finish knitting this this afternoon and put it in the bag of tricks, which I'll talk about in a minute. I also knit a baby hat on Friday on our way to um, a party that we were going to. Um, I have a niece that had a new baby boy in July, who, which I've talked about, and then um, I wanted to gift him a hat, so I took some yarn, and I'll have the picture in here of the little hat. I did not get a picture 
of it on him, which was really dumb. Things were a little crazy at the party we were at, so I wish I would have. Okay, my pumpkin bread is going off, so I need to go check it and see if it's done. My pumpkin bread recipe makes three loaves, <laughs> big loaves. It's full of sugar and eggs and spices, <laughs> but I wanted to make little loaves, so I'm making three little loaves and two big loaves, and so I, I don't know quite how long to bake the small loaves for. So I just wanted to double check them. They need a little more time, which I figured they would. Um, I watched a few things and I like to share because I always want to know what's out there to watch. So we watched the Air documentary. It's about Nike, the Nike shoe and um, Michael Jordan. Really interesting. It's a movie. Um, and so that was fun. And then I watched My Life with the Walter Boys. My mom and dad were watching it and they said that it was kind of cute. And it is young girl moves to a farm <clears throat> outside of a small town and um, moves in with these six boys because her family has had an accident. And yeah, it's kind of their lives. It's a series. Um, I think it's very teen driven, you know, lots of boy girl flirting and things going on. But the family has some stuff going on and yeah it, yeah, it was good. It was nice to have on in the background while I was knitting. And then someone recommended last time the um, show called Annika and it is a crime drama that came out in 2021. There are two seasons. Um, and uh, so I finished all that and it was quite good. Um, it's the same actress that was in the other um, dramas that I have been watching. So Nicola Walker. Um, who is also in The Last Tango in Halifax, which someone said they're going to put that on their list to watch. And you must put that on your list to watch because that was a great series. Okay, I have a few Corey stories and an audiobook, and then we'll be done. Um, yeah, busy, busy, busy. That's what I wrote. Wednesday night, we had a Christmas party for Ross's work. So um, we went to uh, the CFO's house and... Um, she is now the acting CEO of the company, and there were probably, I don't know, 10 couples maybe, but a woman fainted during the party and then had kind of a, a mini seizure, and the ambulance had to come, and the EMTs, and we were all ready to go through the line to get the food, and she had all, you know, the beautiful cheddar potatoes and the prime rib all set out, and and the men came in in their big clomping boots and this lady's laying in the in the kitchen. Um, and they she went to the hospital and the next day they found out that they really didn't find anything, maybe dehydration. Um, she has fainted before in the heat once, but, and we were all standing around for a long time. I want to, I want to bring that up because if you have people of a certain age, um, coming to your holiday party and everyone's standing around in the kitchen, one of the best things you can do is have some people sit because <laughs> they always won't think of it. And me with my bad kind of low back and my knees, like I thought we had been standing around visiting for a really long time and she was getting food ready, but I, and then this woman got just, you know, loose headed kind of, you know, and went down. It was very scary. Took some, they ran next door and got a, a doctor who lives next door. She happened to be a gynecologist, but she came running in her scrubs and she at least knew how to take vitals, right? And so um, before the ambulance got there, it was just very stressful for everybody. And the woman that fainted felt so bad, but she did, when she was on the ground, her eyes kind of rolled back again and it was scary. Um, but that was Wednesday night. We had lovely food. The food was delicious. Um, and then Thursday night, we went out with two friends, um, my friend Renee, who was on the podcast, and we went and listened to music um, of a friend of hers at a restaurant. It was lovely. The food was so good. And we ordered this giant chocolate cake afterwards, which my husband doesn't eat, but the three of us shared. <laughs> it was so good. It was really good. Um, and that was Thursday night. And then on Friday, we had to go to Lake City, Minnesota because, well, good hue if you're a Minnesotan, because my brother-in-law, Ross's brother, retired. And he was the CFO at a big co-op, Agri Partners, in South Minnesota. And a huge co-op, very successful co-op, like billion dollar business. Um, and I have not been in a room with that many farmers in many, many years. So when I was teaching um, in Edgerton, we'd have a lot of farm people. And when I grew up, 
I grew up with with family members who had farms. So, but this was they provided a lunch, so they had hot beef san hot sandwiches and cold sandwiches and chips and cake and pop and water and all the farmers came in to see Joel because they've all known him. He's worked there for 37 years and they've had incredible growth at this, you know, ag business where they do all the seed and, you know, all that. Plus it's an investment situation. They're not a bank, but the farmers can invest with them. So lots of wealthy farmers in Southern Minnesota who own tons and tons and tons of land, right? That's very profitable and very, you know, just beautiful land, but they farm it. And so tons of people, it was a three hour open house and three and a half, three hours and 45 minutes later, people were still standing around talking. All the farmers came in and ate lunch and, and wives too, farmers' wives too. Um, but Joe knew all of them. And I don't think he sat down. I don't think he ate the whole time. Um, Ross got him a fishing pole, which is super nice because Joe had bought a couple of fishing poles the last couple of years and the tip had broke off. And then a number of years ago, Ross had stepped on Joe's pole in the boat and broke it. He gave him money for it, but Joe never bought like the nice pole. So Ross gave him a really nice fishing pole and reel and Joe was just shocked by that. And then his daughters gave him flying lessons because when they were growing up, he was flying um, small planes and he loved it, but then he gave it up and was just too busy. And, you know, so then they gave him kind of a, a flying lesson. He's like, are you kidding? Are you, he was so excited. So that was very fun. But then we all went out as a family. We went to Red Wing and we all went and had appetizers and had lunch or it was getting late by that time. It was like 4.30, so it was dinner for us. But then we had to drive home. <laughs> so that was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now we're on Saturday. Saturday, we went out to dinner with friends last night. The Vikings played yesterday and lost. So we watched that and then we went out with friends for dinner last night. My um, roommate from my first two years of teaching, Julie, one of my best friends, who I don't see that often because she lives way north of the Twin Cities. And um, she's the one who rocks babies at the hospital and does a lot of um, the small children stuff in her retirement. She was a teacher like me and she retired. And then she was a uh, Mother Goose, where you could go rock babies. And then once she retired, they hired her to teach some of the young kids who are in the, the hospital long-term. And so they had just done a huge um, shop for stuff for kids. They spent thousands and thousands of dollars getting, because they had this big donation, um, getting toys and things for the hospital and the classroom and all that um, for those kids. But she also sets up like haircuts for the families and things like that, that while they're staying there, um, and sometimes they have to go home for a while. It's really, it's really interesting. She works part-time, but it's what she does. So we saw them last night. And then today we are um, having a Christmas party here. So my husband's team has gotten reduced drastically. And so they're only going to be six of us, um, but they're coming here for supper. So this morning I made baked spaghetti and, um, cheese dip and uh, we're gonna make three different sauces we're gonna have alfredo sauce and spaghetti meat sauce and sun-dried tomato sauce um ross bought cheesecake because i said uh you know we like we are just not home <laughs> to i could have made cheesecake today anyway so now i'm making pumpkin bread because i'm going to send home little loaves with the people that are coming um but tomorrow my mom and dad are coming because my uncle passed away so last Monday, my uncle passed away and his funeral is Tuesday and he was 96, I think, uh, maybe 95. Um, and he was a pastor here in Minnesota in Brooklyn Park and um, he had had cancer for a number of years. And when my parents came up in October for Kylie to shop wedding dresses, we took them up to see Harley and Bev. And so they went up, spent the afternoon at their house, for a couple of hours they visited it was lovely and Harley was doing quite well and then he was put on hospice and was in the hospital for a few days last week and then passed so we have a mom and dad coming Monday and then Tuesday we have the fun funeral and Tuesday night I teach online um, so I'm teaching my skeins to skeins which is really not a class it's just a fun activity it's trivia so if you'd like to join the Minnesota Knitters Guild Zoom on um, 
Tuesday night from seven to eight, I'm gonna do <laughs> gonna do my trivia thing. My parents will be here, and then we're gonna try to have Christmas with Kylie and Stevie on Wednesday because we can't do it Tuesday because I have to do this thing online. Um, and so mom and dad will stay till Wednesday because they were supposed to come for Christmas on Friday or Saturday, <laughs> depending on the weather. And our weather's been lovely. Monday, I'm taking knitters to the yarn store <laughs> before my parents come. Yeah, it, it's just been a week of, and I know it's like this for everyone. And I was just so crabby last night. I, I just was frustrated and mad. I, and we got home and I was just like, I do not want to have this party tomorrow. I do not want to cook all day. I got up this morning and did this, some of the cooking, got some stuff prepared. It's not that hard, but boy, I was just tired and crabby. I said, what is going on? You seem so stressed. I'm like, I am. It has been days and days. And in, in the midst of that, you know, you're shopping and getting gifts and making sure that everyone has something because does he do any of that? No. It's very gendered in our house around Christmas. I do all of it. He does a lot of stuff around the house, you know, laundry, cleaning up, all of that. And this morning he helped stir and open and, you know, but I've done all the gift wrapping that which took two two afternoons I gift wrapped and I'm only buying for a few people but I do sh I do um gift exchange with a few of my knitting friends so it's just you know been busy and crazy and anyway so that's why this I'm gonna try to make I'm just running through this try to make this kind of quick um okay I probably shouldn't have filled those little loaf pans quite so full <laughs> they have really crusted and they're not done in the middle <laughs> So maybe this good idea was not such a good idea. We'll see, because now they've been in 30 minutes and they're not done in the middle. <laughs> and Ross said, why are you baking? And I said, don't yell at me. I'm like, why are you working on the truck? Because <laughs> he's out working on the truck. Okay, and then lastly, I have a Christmas gift project bag. So I have been making presents all year, cowls, hats, scarves. Um, mostly mittens, um, and I just put them in a box, and, and then I give them away. And last year, I had a couple of things left over at the end of the season, so they were already in the box. And so um, a couple weeks ago, we got together with um, at Thanksgiving with my sister-in-law, and I brought the bag, and everybody picked something. And then um, uh, yesterday, I took the bag. My nieces were there for their dad's retirement, and and then the other two women that were there also picked something, which was a little strange, but you know, it's fine. Um, so they, you know, Kaylee and Melissa and Ashley all picked something. And then um, tonight I will have the ladies pick something out of the bag. And yeah, that's just kind of how I do it. I make sure that then they get, they're picking something they like. If they don't want something, they don't have to take anything. It's fine with me, right? And then they can pick one or two things and yeah, and they're happy and I'm happy and I had some men's stuff, some guy stuff in there, but that's kind of all gone because I had more guys picking this year. So I don't have kind of a lot of men's, more men's things left. Um, but if they want one of the hats that's more colorful, that's fine with me too. Okay, I read two books in the, listened to two books in the last two weeks. The first one was called Community Board. Very interesting premise. Um, a woman reads um, the stuff, and so we would call it like the next door app here. I don't know what you would have in your state where people can go on. It's kind of like a Facebook for a neighborhood where you can, you know, talk about things or say, hey, this is going on. Or, you know, if someone needs somebody for a specific type of job, snow plowing or mowing, they can put it out there, whatever. So the book is kind of based on that, and um, she's living in this town. And she's reading these, this community board and things that are happening. And then there's one kind of weird one in there that comes up every so often. And every, everyone kind of ignores it and doesn't know why that that, that is there. So it's a, it was a really good, interesting book. Okay, I looked up some of the things because they're really funny. Free, 500 cans of corn. Accidentally ordered them online. I really hate corn. Happy to un help unload. Reminder, use your own goddamn garbage can for your own pet waste. I'm looking at you, Peter Lufflin. <laughs> Reminder, monthly select board meeting this Friday. Agenda items, sludge removal, upkeep of chime tower, ice number three, ice rink monitor, thank you gift. 
it's just kind of cute. So yeah, this dark Darcy has returned home to Massachusetts after her life takes an unwelcome left turn. Darcy is convinced um, that Murbridge, this town, will welcome her and provide safe space in which she can nurse her wounds. Um, but it's it's she's going back to the hometown that had a lot of problems to begin with, right? And then she's in this neighborhood, and she gets home, and her parents aren't there; they're gone long-term gone and they have not told her that they've gone to Arizona for the winter and she is devastated in a really bad place and she goes into their house and by herself and and just hunkers down and yeah it's very clever it's funny it's quirky uh, it has a neat premise so yeah I would I would recommend it if you just want something kind of fun to read lighthearted if you're tired of like intense crime or drama then this would be a good one and then i just finished um the 12 dogs of christmas by susan wiggs and it it's just lovely it's rescue dogs and um, this woman who doesn't like christmas and she's gonna take these dogs back with this other woman because someone got sick in this van and of course something terrible happens along the road and they need help and and she gets stuck in this town that is full of Christmas with these dogs that she's helping to that she she works for the organization but she doesn't do the rescue piece she just places the animals so if you love dogs they're, they're characters um, and then of course she's single uh, fairly recently divorced and meets this EMT on the road and yeah it was it was lovely not too hallmarky but a little bit right the the end was a little predictable but the dogs made <laughs> made it great uh, so yeah and then i said that i was going to wrap it up quickly so the giveaway for this last week was a um the skeins of pink yarn to give away and so you had to work use the word pink in the um comment and that is going to dm brown there were lots of people who liked pink yarn and lots of people who loved mary brown and so thank you so much for the comments it's really nice after we get done recording and i put the podcast up and i've edited it when you go out and make a comment to them about how much you enjoyed them being on the podcast because it takes you know quite a bit of energy and time for them to come over and bring their get you know bring their items that they've knit and so yeah it was really lovely that you gave her such a warm welcome and then this week i'm giving away a big prize because two different people have gifted me project bags and um and i love them but I have so many project bags and it feels a little um, indulgent to keep them all because I don't even use the ones I have. So this one was knit by Ann here in Minnesota and she sent it to me and it is so cute. It's got mittens and these little birds and she made this and it's got this nice handle. <sighs> I should keep it because she sent it as a gift, but she said I could give it away. So that is one. And then the second one Matt gifted to me and this has got um, kind of sea life on it. And Matt's bags are lovely. And a red interior lining. So those will be two gifts this week. And in order to um, qualify, you need to use the word project in your comment. <coughs> and I want to tell me what project you're knitting on. So what are you working on over Christmas? Are you knitting on gifts, last minute gifts? Or are you starting something new? Are you casting on? During the holiday, do you have time off and you get to knit? Do you cast on something new New Year's Eve? You know, anything like that, just let me know and then use the word project and I will draw two winners next time for one for each of the bags and you'll just get what you get, Matt's bag or Ann's bag. Um, as I said, I'm teaching here coming up on Tuesday, which will be the night that this goes live, the 19th um, from seven to eight, I'm doing skeins to skeins. And then in January, I am doing the Hand Knitters Guild of Dallas. I'm teaching um, Bickle Braids and Two Color Cast On. And then in February, I'm teaching for them again in Dallas um, online on Zoom. 
um, for their Hand Knitters Guild, I'm teaching Latvian braids. So if you are a member of that group or want to go over and um, join that group, then you could be a part of that. I want to wish everyone a happy holiday. And um, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate every single one of you who watch this podcast over and over. It's, you know, but we're five years in and some of you are just really diehard viewers you never miss. You always comment. You're very uplifting and supporting. Um, nothing makes me happier than when you purchase a pattern <laughs> and let me know because um, I've got lots of patterns out there and um, it, it's just, I look at every single, I open every single purchase and look to see what that Ravelry name is of the person that purchases it and I give it a little thank you because um, it just means a lot. So I do have some designs that I need to get working on here in the next week and that is the pumpkin bread going off again. So I'm going to just sign off with keep your fork, keep a colorful, love you all, come in for your hug and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye.